AMD's Ryzen 9 9950X and 9900X are here. And I noticed when the 9700X and 9600X models were released, a lot of people had an issue with their viewers using DDR5-6000. Given the fact that Zen 5 technically supports memory speeds up to 8000. So I got some DDR5-8000 and compared different memory speeds with the 9950X. Like I said before, with lower end models, you'd be better off spending the money that you would on faster memory on a higher end CPU. But if you already have the fastest, can faster memory make it even better? Well, let's find out. Oh, and if you want to pick up one of these new Ryzen CPUs or any of the other 9000 parts, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. If you've been following the channel, you know that I already released a video discussing the Ryzen 9000 Reviewer's Guide from AMD. In it, they still consider DDR5-6000 to be the sweet spot for the 9000 CPUs. There's a few reasons for this, but the main one has to do with the relationship between three things. The memory clock, unified memory controller clock, and the infinity fabric clock. In earlier generations, they were connected, and while they're now decoupled, they still have a relationship to one another. Specifically, anything under DDR5-6000, the unified memory controller clock and memory clock are in a one-to-one -one ratio. But when you move past DDR5-6000, it moves into a one-to-two ratio, so that heavily slows things down. But is 8000 enough to make up for it? To find out, I got one of the few DDR5-8000 kits out there, G-Skills Trident Z 48GB Dual Stick Memory. It comes with these timings at 1.35 volts. And while it doesn't have Expo support, it does at least have an XMP profile at 8000, and I use various speeds below 8000. I also bought a kit from Crucial with 48GB at 6000. It doesn't have the best timings, but I needed another 48GB kit for the best comparison. I included the kit that also came with the reviews to see any kind of difference. The rest of the test bench includes, of course, the Ryzen 9950X, a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master, and the RX 7900 XTX. So when it comes to the testing itself, I had some major stability issues with 8000. I'm talking it would crash in Cinebench 2024, 7-zip, a bunch of games. I tried upping the voltage as high as 1.4, increasing the timings. It really just wouldn't completely work regardless of what I did, though I did at least get a couple benchmarks off that I'll show you in a minute. I've also heard some motherboards are better than others with Ryzen 7, 7000, so that may still be the case with Ryzen 9000. And this is a good reminder that while AMD's new CPUs technically support up to DDR5-8000, it doesn't guarantee it. In fact, for those who don't know, anything over 5600 is considered an overclock. Also, I'll point to AMD's next-gen 800 boards, which we still haven't heard any new information on a release. They are still coming, but I just don't know when. Either way, it does apparently come in support for faster memory, so it will likely be easier with those. Moving on to performance, like I said, I only really got a couple benchmarks out of DDR5-8000, specifically a single and multi-core Cinebench R23. And as you'll notice, it did do better than the DDR5-6000 score, but only marginally better. We're literally talking less than 1% so this can easily fall within the margin of error. When I moved over to Cinebench 2024, that's when I started having crashes, and I mean full-on rebooting every time. But moving down to DDR5-7800, things became much more stable, though I did have a couple crashes, just nothing like 8000. Now, looking at these charts overall, you can see that we have very similar scores here. In fact, you can see that while 7800 does better in some scenarios than DDR5-6000, once you move any lower Lower than that, it starts losing performance. And that goes back to once you move past DDR5-6000, it moves into a 1 to 2 ratio with the unified memory controller clock. So that gets cut in half to your memory clocks. You can see here that at 7600 megatransfers per second, which is 3800 megahertz, the U clock is running at 1900 megahertz, and the Infinity Fabric runs at 2000 on pretty much all of these. So anything below 7800 isn't fast enough to make up for the memory controller clocks being cut in half. And as you can see, even at 7800, it's still only barely faster. Plus, like I said, even at 7800, I was still having crashes. It was just much less frequent and typically freeze instead of causing a full reboot. 
but all of that is comparing it to the lower latency DDR5-6000 that came with AMD's preview units. When we look at the DDR5-6000 that is pretty terrible latency, even though it has 48 gigabytes versus 32, we see that it starts to actually lose some of that performance. In fact, it loses the most benchmarks out of all of them, so timings are even more important than speed. Ultimately, even if you were lucky enough to get a system that can easily handle DDR5-8000, there really isn't a big enough performance boost to justify the difference in price. At least that's my opinion, but ultimately you can of course see why AMD suggests DDR5-6000. If you can get lucky enough to overclock that a little while still keeping it at a 1 to 1 ratio, it may be worth it. AMD suggests that some systems can get as high as 6400. So while that does it for today, how fast can you get your Ryzen 9000 memory? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.